welcome back to Sister Circle Live. If you have ever asked yourself questions like, why are we here? How does the universe work? And what is our place in the cosmos? <laughs> our next guest has the answers to these questions and so many more. I had the pleasure of sitting down with world-renowned astrophysicist and author Neil deGrasse Tyson. Just take a look. Mr. Tyson, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having uh, me. My oh, first time on my Sister God. Circle. Well, you're always welcome. Okay. This is our call. <laughs> so you were recently on CBS this yeah. morning, mm -hmm. and uh, you addressed the allegations of sexual misconduct, mm -hmm. and you talked about how uh, this past year has changed you. Well, only that it was, uh, you know, the, the investigations were completed, and mm -hmm. all all plans continued as they were before. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, what was different for me was realizing just over that time just how important friends were and yes, family yes. and and even the fan base that mm. was there they provide sort of a buoyant force yeah. for you in times when you need it most and so uh, that it's I think it, it, it bears reminding that uh, it's it's almost too easy to take all that for granted yes. from one day to the next well yeah. speaking of taking things for granted I mean you're obviously a brilliant man but when did you know that your brain just kind of operated differently than other people? Well, so, yeah, so those may be two different things, okay. right? Uh, often we think who's brilliant is who gets high grades in, in school. Right. I didn't really get high grades. I got kind of average grades. So, but I, upon graduating school, became a lifelong learner. Think of how much time you don't spend in school compared to school. How about the people who run down the steps on the last day of school and they say, school's out! Right. They toss the papers in the air. It's like, what happened in school so that now you're glad it's over? Wow. Right? Yes. There's something missing there. Yes. Your only job was to learn. learn. Well, you know, you've been like the cool scientist. You know, you make watching it fun and making it, you know, so something that you really want to see. At, like you were talking about, um, you know, when, when you're finished with school, you throw all the papers in the air <laughs> saying, okay, well, school's done, school's finished. Uh -huh. But you make it something that you want to see. I, I, yeah. I, yeah, because, <laughs> well, because science is, every, well, science in particular mm. is everywhere. Yes. And I think people don't realize this. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I highlight for you, so I'll give you an example. There was a, uh, I, I channel surfing and I hit the end of a football game and the score was tied. It was sudden death. And the kicker <laughs> is kicking from like the 50 yard line. And then it just barely veers and it hits the left upright and then careens in for the win. Okay. And I said, wait a minute. So I did a fast calculation and I said, you know, that ball was deflected a third of an inch to the right mm -hmm. because of Earth's rotation. Earth's rotation helped them score that. And I, really? and I posted this on social media. And then there were headlines that said, God helped the team. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, became, it became interesting local news. And all I did was, was clad science onto something people already cared about. Yeah. And so I think that's where the connection comes from and the valuation of saying, yeah, science is cool because it relates to my life. Right, right. Recently, we just saw you on Bill Maher, and you were talking about how the school system has failed us. Do you care to expound on that? Well, so, <laughs> I, we have people walking among us who in their own mind are certain that Earth is flat. That is evidence of two things. One, that we live in a country that protects free speech. Okay. Good. <laughs> we live in a country with a failed educational system. Okay. The fact that grown adults are thinking and feeling this way about what is true in the world. Mm -hmm. So that tells me that in the educational pipeline, people are not learning what science is, how and why it works, how do you go from a data to information to knowledge to wisdom. Oh. That trajectory is something that without it, how could you ever have leaders with, that have any true understanding of what has to happen in our society? So, well, so I fear the future of our civilization. Uh, you and me both. Okay. And, and, but with that, um, how, how do you feel about the current education system and with the no kid left behind and how sometimes in certain educational systems, children, are, they're, they're just kind of sifted through and just yeah, pushed through. Yeah, that's, that's very important. And I still have a lot of thinking that I'm doing on that and one day I might write on it. But right now, I have to pull it out of the oven because I'm still baking these ideas. So some of it is half baked. <laughs> but I have just some thoughts that uh, somewhere in the school system, 
we, we keep thinking of students as these empty vessels that you pour information in, then they take a test, and then you decide how much information have they learned, rather than as, as, as embers that should be mm. fanned so that they then ignite with curiosity. If you graduate a curious person, they become lifelong learners. Oh, yeah. If you just think of them as a vessel that needed to be filled, then it fills up and it spills out later on and we got nothing by the time you're an adult. And that, to me, that explains everything about the state of the world today. You have people who are not plugged in to an understanding of how this world works, why it works, and what the problems are with, the, with climate change and energy and, 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 and it just, are we the shepherds we need to be mm. of the future of civilization? Oh my and God. I don't think so. Mm. Oh, I God. love him so much. He's yeah. such a brain on two feet. Oh. But we'll be right back with more of my interview with him after this. I like I'm brains on two feet. Don't do feet I like that. I would not want a brain on one foot. We are back on Sister Circle Live, and now here's more of my interview with the incredibly smart and gifted Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yes. So let's delve into your book. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. It is called. Where'd you pull that out of? I, I oh mean, my gosh. Out of the thin air. <laughs> out of the thin air. Whoa. Letters from an astrophysicist. <laughs> yes. Now, you've written a lot of books. Yeah. But this one seems a lot more personal. Yeah, it's completely personal. Yes. Oh my gosh. Letters from you, letters uh, to, to you. To me and from right. me. And letters that I just wrote. Well, one is to NASA. Oh. Not when I was a kid, but like last year I wrote it to NASA because NASA and I were born the same week. Yes. And I, I talked wow. about and I talked about how the 1960s, when NASA went to the moon, looked different to me. What do you mean? Because I saw the civil rights movement and mm. nobody going to the moon had anything near my skin color. Right, and so, right. so it was two Americas over that time. And so I, I, I just, in my letter to NASA, I just reminding NASA that not everything happened the, the country was divided in a time when people thought it wasn't right. who were going to the moon. There are other, there's correspondence, there's three letters from people in prison. Really? Yes, yes. And, and there's another one from, of a man who's about to die. He just got a, a, a terminal diagnosis. Mm. And he wrote me to thank me for the videos that I had created that kept him going in retirement as a lifelong learner. Wow. So some are very moving right. for me, I hope for the reader. Um, there, there's a, a whole section on parenting mm. where parents are asking, well, my kid shows this interest, but the one the kid is autistic. Right. And how, does that, how do they navigate this? So it's very personal. When, when, we ask, when we ask all these questions, like what are your thoughts of God? What are your uh -huh. thoughts on the universe? What are the right questions we should be asking? No, I, sometimes we don't know the right question. Suppose someone said, gee, I wonder what kind of cheese the moon is made of. <laughs> okay, okay, then you design all these experiments. Is it Roquefort? <laughs> is it cheddar? Is it a thing? And he finds out in the end it's not made of any kind of cheese at all. Yeah. So just because you compose the question with verbs and nouns and a question mark at, in the end doesn't mean it's even the right question. And on the frontier of science, we don't always know. Right. And consider that the area, think of an area of a circle, as the body of knowledge we are accumulating, and on the other side is the unknown. As the area of our knowledge grows, so too does the perimeter of our ignorance. Yes. Oh, thank you so much for being here. You have to come back. We have to talk more about the We didn't talk about aliens. We, 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 will, we will have to have this conversation again, so you're definitely you welcome back. back you, I, I, so I we, can come back. Have, we can continue on to have this conversation. All right. Everybody, Mr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, there's no one like him. I love him. I'm gonna put him in my pocket and take him home. <laughs> <laughs> wow, great job, oh, Trina. Oh, yes. Gosh. What more did you learn, like, th what we didn't see from, from his mind? Well, one of the questions that I asked him was, what if everything we've always been taught to know, learn, understand, and believe is not true? Right. Oh, wow. that's, that, that's, that's a real question. It is. How do you was, respond to that? Well, he said that there are no real wrong questions. He said we should question those things. But I mean, I kind of left unfulfilled because I wanted him to stay a little bit longer and he right. had to go. Right. But I felt like he really wanted to answer that question for me, but just but really couldn't. Yeah. And maybe the answers are in his book. I so want to know about aliens, too. You want to know about... <laughs> but you don't believe in that but kind of stuff. But you asked him about global warming. 
I asked him about so many things. It's right. like it's even more off camera. camera. Yeah, but you know, he, he said that our country is so vain mm -hmm. that we probably already do know about aliens. He said, we can't keep a secret. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, right. Right. Yeah, look at the movies. <laughs> right, like, right. I imitate life. These people don't fool me down to these movies. Right. Well, they're giving us hints. <laughs> well, his book, Letters from an Astrophysicist, is available where all fine books are sold. And the conversation always continues with Sister Circle TV on all social media platforms. Hey, job, Trina. Right. Yes. I want to know about global